Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I know that we have both organizational partners and individual advocates tuned in, and we're so grateful to all of you for your dedication to raising awareness about heart valve disease. We are about a month out from the big day, a little more, um, so it's game on. Um, the goal of today's webinar is to give you some tips and best practices for advocating for heart valve disease um, and amplifying your reach. So I'm Lindsay Clark, Vice President of Health Education and Advocacy, and along with Kelsey Martin, our Health Programs Coordinator, we lead the Heart Valve Disease Awareness Day campaign. Kelsey and I will be telling you about the campaign resources available for both in-person events and online outreach. We'll then turn it over to our communications team of Lauren Smith-Dyer, our VP of Communications, and Janelle Germanos, our Communications Manager, who will both be giving you um, an in-depth look at both the traditional and the social media outreach opportunities for the month. We're then very fortunate to have two of our partners joining us today who will talk about what they've done in the past for Valve Disease Day and what they have planned for 2020. So what is Heart Valve Disease Awareness Day? Um, for those of you who aren't as familiar with Heart Valve Disease Awareness Day, I'm gonna give you a quick overview. Um, heart valve disease impacts as many as 11 million Americans. We know it's a disease of aging um, and it can be very um, fatal if not treated properly. Um, in 2017, the Alliance for Aging Research conducted a survey to find out how many people knew about heart valve disease. What we found was that about three out of four Americans knew little to nothing about it. Recognizing the seriousness of this gap, the Alliance joined forces with 17 other organizations coming together on February 22nd to collectively use our voices to raise awareness about the risk factors and symptoms of valve disease, improve detection and treatment, and ultimately save lives. While valve disease can be disabling and deadly, available treatments can save lives, making education and awareness particularly important. So on this day and throughout the year, the campaign and its par partners host events, reach out on social media, work with journalists, and find creative ways to get people to pay attention to the important messages of this campaign. And starting in 2017, um, the Department of Health and Human Services officially recognized the day on its National Health Observances calendar. We're currently working with them to get an official toolkit up on their site, and it should be available any day if you're interested in accessing it for you or any of your partners. You can find it at healthfinder.gov NHO. So just a quick look at 2019 and some of our highlights and impact. So last year was our third year. Um, we were joined by 65 partners and thousands of online contributors. We were able to reach more than 11 million on the radio, close to 800,000 through digital PSAs, and more than 63 million on TV. Collectively, we reached an estimated audience of more than 154 million people and more than 8.5 million in a high impact way. Our partners hosted more than 30 in-person and online educational events, which my colleague Kelsey Martin will talk more about in a moment. Our flagship event for the year uh, was co-hosted with MedStar Heart and Vascular Institute in Washington, D.C., and featured fabulous speakers, including our own Sue Peshin, Dr. John White, who is WebMD's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Stuart Seides, and Dr. Lowell Sattler of MedStar, and also U.S. Surgeon General Vice Admiral Jerome Adams. The campaign was also featured in 30 letters to the editor. We reached more than 2.5 million potential readers. We had um, a press release that ran in 174 outlets and reached a potential audience of 10 million. Uh, social media and online promotion produced close to 200,000 engagements and around 400,000 views. We also had more than 70 million impressions. Additionally, an Adam Reader's Digest educated the 16.3 million readers about the day. But none of this would have happened without our partners. We are so honored to now have 70 partners this includes nonprofits, advocacy organizations, professional societies, heart and vascular institutes, and more. They all join us in this important effort. So thank you, thank you to everyone. I also wanted to note that if you know of any additional organizations that might want to join the effort, it's not too late. You can have them contact us to learn more, and we will be sharing various emails throughout the presentation. Wanted to um, give you a quick update that we have done um, some updates to our website. Um, the first thing is that after careful consideration, we decided to drop national from our brand to better include our international partners. This led to the updating of our logo and many campaign assets. 
These are all now available on valvediseaseday.org. So everything that you've used in the past now exists without, exists without national. And we urge you to use those in your outreach for 2020, um, especially if you're reusing anything from last year. It's a, a, a PSA to check back and um, download new logos and graphics. However, if you have signage that either you or we have printed for you that you want to reuse, that it's evergreen in every other way, um, please feel free to use it. It's, it's completely fine. And we also updated the website. Um, many of you, in your, of you in years past may have seen our outreach toolkit. We updated the website to really make that more um, streamlined and something that you don't need to necessarily download. Um, so hopefully you all find it easier to use. Um, but if there's anything that you find that's missing or any resources that you wish you had, please let us know and we're happy to work with you. Another new feature of the site is a new events page. Um, and we've really done this. You'll still be able to see things listed um, but by date, but you can also find it by location. So if you have, um, if anyone is in a particular area and they want to tune in or show up in an event, um, this is the tool they'll use. Um, we ask that you make sure you share any of your events with us um, so that we can put it up here. We can, if it's not open to the public, we can put that it's RSVP only. If, even if it's online, um, this is a great way for people to see what's going on in their community. So please make sure to send your details to us so we can get it up as soon as possible. Um, I just want to note that you know, this is great for us to be able to share what the campaign is doing to show the momentum and the dedication of our partners. But it's also really um, a good way to get some visibility for your event because we do get tens of thousands of people who are um, visiting the site each year. Uh, I'm now going to turn it over to my colleague, Kelsey Martin, who many of you probably know for her, from her incredible work on this campaign and I'm sure many of you have heard from. I'm grateful for her dedication to this cause. So Kelsey, take it away. So over the past years, our campaigners have taken Heart Valve Disease Awareness Day into their own hands and I've hosted dozens of events that invite their communities to learn more about heart valve disease. This slide features some photos from just a sample of the work of our partners and their efforts towards spreading the word. The word. Some events held by our partners include a wonderful flagship event with Inova Heart and Vascular Institute in Northern Virginia that brought together over 200 patients, caregivers, healthcare professionals, and local and federal representatives. Chi Memorial Cardiovascular Symposium hosted an educational booth that was attended by hundreds of healthcare professionals, while Baylor Scott and White Hospital Plano held a consumer lunch event that featured an expert panel. Atlantic Health System in New Jersey launched a new Women's Health Resource Center in partnership with Women Heart on Valve Disease Day, while the University of Arizona Sarver Heart Center held a health fair that included health screenings, healthy cooking demonstrations, educational materials, and more. Emergency USA hosted a local senior center event in Brooklyn with attendees including immigrants from Russia, Belarus, Moldova, China, Ukraine, and more. Florida Medical Center held a lunch and learn event and educational breakfast for their patients. And another great example is Hartford Healthcare, who in Connecticut held an educational booth with heart valve disease awareness materials for their community. From educational luncheons and lectures to expert panels, educational booths, and health fairs, the sky is the limit in what you can do to host an event. We've spoken with many of you about your plans for 2020, but if we haven't and you think it would be helpful to you, we would love to collaborate to come up with some ideas. I'll have my contact information available at the end. I know most of you already have my email, um, so feel, feel free to shoot me an email um, and we can discuss something for next month. If you are planning on hosting an event this year, we have plenty of downloadable resources available for you to easily brand your activities. You can find the following resources on this slide on the Valve Disease Day website. Click the Get Involved webpage tab and choose Organize an Event in the drop-down. Some of our great resources include an awareness survey form, which is a great tool to pass out to your audience and collect to see how much they know about heart valve disease. We also have event signage that includes a customizable X-frame banner and several podium signs with the official campaign logos. We also have great take-home resources for event attendees that include an educational postcard, valve disease tape, pens, 
and heart-shaped sunglasses, which are new this year. The heart-shaped sunglasses include the Valve Disease Day website URL and are great for snapping photos along with our selfie signs for patients and advocates. If you have not placed your order for sunglasses, you can email me with your unit number you wish to order as well as your shipping address. Please note that quantities are very limited and these will be sent out on a first come surf, first served basis. Please place your orders by February 10th. If you have speakers or presenters at your event, we have a ready to use slide presentation template that is branded for Valve Disease Day that you can use. Lastly, if you wish to order branded merchandise for yourself, loved ones, or an event, you can purchase branded t-shirts, mugs, pins, magnets, and more through our Zazzle page located under the Shop tab on our website. We may be able to help print some of these resources for you, but please reach out in advance to ensure that there's enough time to ship them to you and that you have them ready to go for Valve Disease Day and the weeks leading up. Leading up. In addition to in-person event resources, we have a plethora of assets that can assist you in reaching out to your community and spreading awareness about heart valve disease online. From suggested core messages to website language, logos, and graphics, there are many ways in which you can share your support for Valve Disease Day and spread the word. In addition to suggested social media messaging, which our communications manager, Janelle, will touch on shortly, there are downloadable logos, a website badge, customizable digital magazine ad templates, infographics, and four short educational videos that you can easily plug into your newsletters, blog posts, social media posts, and any other outreach efforts. When adding these assets to your outreach, make sure that you link them back to valvedisease.org. You can explore these downloadable resources and core messages by clicking on the Get Involved tab and then clicking on Spread the Word in the drop-down box. Just a reminder, if you're recycling any resources from last year, remember to update all your assets with the new branding. Now I will turn it over to Lauren to talk a bit more about our communication. Thanks, Kelsey. This is Lauren Smith-Dyer, Vice President of Communications for the Alliance for Aging Research. I want to echo Lindsay's welcome and gratitude for all of your involvement in Heart Valve Disease Awareness Day. I'm going to spend just a few short minutes sharing some tips for engaging traditional media to help raise awareness. By traditional media, I just want to clarify, I mean that the, the tr local media in your area, so local newspapers, radio stations, and TV stations. A local newspaper might actually be your state, city, or even community newspaper, depending on where you live. The tips that I plan to share over the next few minutes are just best practices for pitching reporters at these publications. Oops, yeah, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> if you're interested in pitching local reporters, please note that it's very important that you do your research to identify the right contact at the newspaper, TV radio station, or um, TV station, excuse me. Uh, note that larger newspapers may have health reporters, but smaller publications might have fewer reporters, so they focus on a handful of topics. Either way, make sure you do your research, make sure you're contacting the right person. So at a larger publication, that may be a reporter focusing on health and or science. At smaller publications, it could be an event reporter or a community reporter. Um, at TV or radio station, that could be a general news assignment editor. Finding the right person increases the chances of securing that reporter's attention and interest and increases the chances of that reporter writing about the awareness day, the disease in general, or your event. Reporters are much more likely to cover your event or other valve disease day activities if it involves a unique and personal patient story. Patient stories also help readers and listeners relate to the disease. So we recommend that you pitch a reporter a Valve Disease Day patient story, but before doing so, make sure you have the patient's approval to do so and make sure that they're available to speak to the journalist in their way of helping to raise awareness. If you don't actually have a heart valve disease patient in your immediate network, don't hesitate to let us know here at the Alliance for Aging Research and we can try to connect you with someone in your area. 
Reporters also want to know statistics, such as incidents uh, and diagnosis and awareness information. So be sure to include facts. So for example, there are 11 million Americans living with valve disease um, in your outreach to reporters. And we recommend using the statistics and facts that you can find on the Valve Disease Day website. In addition to those, that information, the Alliance for Aging Research published a silver book in 2018, which you can include in a pitch to a reporter, as well as use the graphics from, for your social media, which we will touch on shortly. Uh, your next best practice for pitching reporters is making sure that your pitch is brief. Reporters receive tons of pitches every single day um, and night, so be brief and to the point. In fact, you, I recommend using a catchy subject line. One way to stay very, very brief in your pitch to a reporter is just to make it a media advisory format, which is the who, what, when, where, why, and how format. Another way is you sending the press release, a press release to your local media. Um, and in the Engage Media section of valvediseaseday.org, you'll find a template uh, press release which you can adapt to your own um, organization's event details, et cetera. And just note that the Alliance plans to issue a nationally distributed press release um, the day on February 22nd, which will highlight the campaign as well as our flagship event, which you'll learn more a little bit later. Um, a great way to get the reporter's attention is to invite them to your event if you're hosting an event. And a couple of ways of doing that is inviting the right reporter, which you've already researched, um, and offer them a tour of your facility. Another option is to offer a free echocardiogram so the journalist can experience it for his or her benefit themselves. So those are just a few very, very high level best practices for uh, pitching the reporters in your area. Um, I would love to be a resource for you. If you have any questions or would like any help, don't hesitate to email me. I'm happy to talk through strategy or help you identify the right reporter in your community. Um, so this is my email address here on the screen here, lsmithdyer at agingresearch.org. And also, as I mentioned previously, the Engage the Media section of the Valve Disease Day online resources the website um, is a great toolkit. So uh, please don't hesitate to pour over that. Let me know if you have any questions. And with that, I'll turn it over to Janelle to really deep dive into social. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Lauren. So I'm going to go over how you can use social media to promote Valve Disease Day. Uh, social media is a great way to get involved in raising awareness of valve disease no matter where you live. So to start off, I want to introduce the three Valve Disease Day social media accounts that you can follow to get the latest news on the campaign. There are three official Valve Disease Day accounts, um, which are Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you're not following us already, I encourage you to. You can find these accounts by visiting the Valve Disease Day website, scrolling down to the bottom, and you'll find a link to all of these social accounts. And then you can also type in at Valve Disease Day in any of these platforms, and you'll find um, our page. And I just encourage you to follow it. So I'm now going to go over a schedule for how you can promote Valve Disease Day on social media and, and what to post when an important milestone to keep in mind as we lead up to Valve Disease Day. While we want to encourage you to promote um, Valve Disease Day on the day itself, um, there's just so much going on um, and we want to build momentum and get as many people as possible involved. So with a month, almost a month to go, now's a great time to start sharing on your Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages and getting Valve Disease Day into the minds of your followers. And even if, you, um, if you're an organization, um, you know, you can do that through your official organization's page, but even individuals, you can still use all of these tips and tell your friends about Valve Disease Day. So you can do a few things a month out. Um, first, you can change your um, profile picture on Facebook to have this um, overlay. And then you could also change your cover photo to the Listen to Your Heart logo, which is available on the Valve Disease Day website. So here are some instru instructions for changing your um, profile picture. It's really easy. It'll take like two minutes, um, and it is now available. So um, you'll go to facebook.com slash profile pick frames, and you can search for valve disease, heart valve disease awareness. Um, 
Valve Disease Day, any of those should bring up the official frame, which will be is Heart Valve Disease Awareness Day frame. Um, you'll click that from the drop down menu that'll come up on the left. And then you can choose how long you'll want the frame to stay up. Um, you know, if you do it now, definitely encourage it to go till, till Valve Disease Day so that we can you can continue alerting your friends and followers. And then something exciting that we are starting this year is these awesome valve um, heart-shaped heart sunglasses that we encourage you to um, order and then you can take a selfie like the one here um, and share on your social media why you're excited for Valve Disease Day. Um, if you are interested in ordering these sunglasses, um, please do as soon as possible. There are um, limited amounts available, and please email um, Kelsey, <coughs> excuse me, Kelsey by um, February 10th. So again, one month away, you can do these um, announcement posts like this one. This is a great way to drum up excitement. And then you can invite your friends to like the page. So here are some instructions um, in case you need them on promoting, or I'm sorry, on um, inviting your friends to like the Valve Disease Day Facebook page. So you'll want to go to our, our Valve Disease Day page, facebook.com slash Valve Disease Day. And then once you're on the page, you'll scroll down to the community section, which is on the right-hand side of the page. You can click invite your friends to like this page. And then there's a preset message where you can um, change it to something like what I have on the right. And then you can select all of your friends or you can click individual friends that you want to invite that you think might be interested, and then click send invites. So, of course, you'll be promoting Valve Disease Day a month away, and then as we get into the week away, um, this is a great time to do a message on Valentine's Day. Um, what better day to encourage people to listen to their hearts than on Valentine's Day? Um, so that you can use a graphic like this and just really take advantage of the, of the holiday to raise awareness of Valve Disease Day. And then we also have um, the Valve Disease Day resources that Kelsey mentioned earlier, video, um, infographics, and those are available on the Valve Disease Day website. So we have activities planned throughout the week. Um, since Valve Disease Day is on a Saturday, um, we recognize that, you know, people, um, might prefer participating in more activities leading up to the day. And of course, we encourage you to schedule posts and you know do as much as you can ahead of time to participate in actual Valve Disease Day, but we also want to give you a chance to participate during the week. So um, there's so many opportunities to engage on social media this year. First, we're really excited to hold a Valve Disease Day blog carnival on Tuesday, February 18th. We want to build excitement for Valve Disease Day by um, we encourage you to post a blog about heart valve disease on your organization's website. Um, we'll then, um, we will compile a link of these blogs on our website and share on social media. Um, if you're doing one, we'll be monitoring for them, but please um, you know, let us know, email us to let us know that you will be doing a blog and you can send us the link and we'll feature it on the Valve Disease Day website and on social media. And some ideas for the blog, um, we'll go, um, there'll be more details, but you can do a blog featuring patient stories um, if, if they are available, um, why your organization is participating in Valve Disease Day, and anything else related to Valve Disease Awareness. So on Wednesday, we're really excited to be hosting a Twitter chat. You'll receive an email um, from us in the beginning of February with more detailed instructions. And um, be sure to just um, tune in on Wednesday, February 19th at 1 p.m. Um, to join the, the Twitter chat, but more uh, instructions will follow at the beginning of February. So on Thursday, we want to celebrate our amazing partners um, who do such a great job participating in Valve Disease Day. Um, on this day, we'll have a slideshow that'll um, share information about our partners, highlighting our partners, and we encourage you to share the video and tell your followers why you're proud to be a Valve Disease Day partner. On Friday, day before Valve Disease Day, we're really excited that we're going to have a Facebook Live 
with Dr. John White of WebMD. So this means that we'll just be, we'll be, we will be broadcasting live on Facebook. Um, Dr. White will be there to answer questions about heart valve disease. Um, there may be an opportunity for him to answer your questions in the comments, and we encourage you to share the video to your own pages. Um, and the vid if you can't make the Facebook Live, the video will also be available afterwards, so no problem, but we really encourage you to um, tune in live. and. Stay tuned for details on timing and we, um, all of that, but we will get you details soon. Also on Friday, you can do more of these reminder messages, um, just reminding everyone that Valve Disease Day is tomorrow. So the big day, Valve Disease Day, Saturday, you'll want to remember to tune into the Valve Disease Day Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts um, for videos and pictures from our flagship, flagship event, which we will talk about more later in this webinar. Um, just a reminder of our username and where you can find us on the, online. So the day of, just um, remember to you know post photos, um, post messages, just raising overall awareness of heart valve disease. If you're having an event, it's great to post what you're doing. Um, even if you're not having an event, you can still post why you're excited that it's valve disease day. And remember to stay tuned to the Valve Disease Day hashtag um, to join the conversation. Um, here's, uh, on Twitter, you can just search it into the search bar up here um, at the top. And then on Instagram, you can search it as well. And you'll see all of the posts um, where people have used the Valve Disease Day hashtag. And like and share whatever you um, would like to. So day after Valve Disease Day, just remember to thank your followers for their support and encourage them if they want any more information to visit valvedisease.org. So important hashtag reminder, um, no matter when or where you're posting about Valve Disease Day, be sure to always use the hashtag. Hashtags did start on Twitter, but they're a must for Instagram as well. And if your Facebook posts are set to public, which if you have an organization page, they, they are. Um, this hashtag will help others follow the conversation surrounding Valve Disease Day. So here's some um, more information on what platform um, is best for what type of content. And not everyone has all three of these platforms, and that's totally fine, but here's just some you know, best practices for each of them. Facebook is a great place for promoting Valve Disease Day to your friends and family. It's a great way, you know, from your personal account to start a conversation with your friends on why spreading awareness of Valve Disease is so important to you. Um, a, a best practice for Facebook is you know, don't use too much text, and if you can, you know, add a photo. It just makes it um, more appealing to people. For Twitter, if you're on Twitter, you know you're limited to 240 characters, so Twitter is really good for sharing short messages and stats about valve disease. Remember to use the hashtag, and that's you can um, like and retweet tweets, and you can follow the hashtag and the Valve Disease A Twitter account. Instagram is a great place to post graphics and photos related to valve disease. Um, take photos of any events you might be attending relating to valve disease, share infographics, and Take a selfie showing your support for Valve Disease Day. And here's a list of other hashtags other than Valve Disease Day that you can use. So just remember, do you want to tag the Valve Disease Day social accounts? You want to use the hashtag. You want to engage with others by liking and sharing. Use images with your posts when possible and link to our website. Um, if you can, try to avoid posting text-heavy content and try to avoid if you can posting without photos. And it's best, you'll get more um, reach with your posts if you don't post early in the morning or very late at night. So try to avoid doing that. Here's an example of just some sample messages that you can use for your posts. Um, please feel free to customize, um, but here are just some ones that you can just copy and paste right from our website. We have them for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You'll find that at valvedisease.org slash campaign slash spread the word, and we'll um, 
just you'll go to that link, um, just go to the valve disease they site and you'll find a link to it right there. Oh yeah, here's the link for everyone. <laughs> um, and you, there you'll, also, you'll find those sample messages that I referred to in the previous slide. And you'll also find these um, awesome assets that Kelsey mentioned earlier that you can also use for social media. Um, like the selfie sign, you can print that out um, and take, um, hold it and take a picture and post it to show your engagement. We have this video, we also have many other videos. We have a 30 second, we have a longer one that you can use to share on Facebook or Twitter and shows people what Valid Disease Day is all about. We have graphics that outline the problem and um, the lack of awareness and why it's important. And we just really encourage you to use them and just to check out all of the resources that we have. So thank you so much. I hope that um, you are excited to use social media to promote Valve Disease Day. And if you have any questions about social, please um, email me. And thank you so much. I will pass it back to Lindsay. Thank you, Janelle. I'd now like to introduce Andrea Baer, who's the Executive Director of Mended Hearts, a great partner of Valve Disease Day. Andrea leads all program development, collaborations, and coalitions at Mended Hearts, which is a national and community-based nonprofit organization that offers the gift of hope to heart disease patients, their families, and caregivers. Mended Hearts is the largest peer-to-peer -peer heart patient support network in the world and has been offering hope and support for 68 years, providing more than 230,000 visits each year. Mended Hearts provides education and support through its 265 chapters in North America that serve more than 460 hospitals. Andrea is a longtime advocate for heart patients who, prior to lending Mended Hearts, was the Director of Patient Advocacy and a volunteer with thousands of hours of service to Mended Hearts. You can read more about Andrea's uh, devotion to patients on this slide, but I don't want to keep us any longer from hearing from Andrea um, what Mended Hearts has been doing for Heart Valve Disease Awareness Day in the past and what um, they have planned for February 22nd. So Andrea, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, I appreciate it, and um, I'm excited to be here. Um, I did kind of just want to go through and let you know some of the things that we did in the past couple of years. Um, I think that we're going to be following the same basic principle of everything that we've done. Uh, we're just going to do more of the same. And so um, on the first slide, you'll see we did a dedicated web, pa web page on our website. Um, we added the graphics and education and links to the resources from the uh, Valve Disease Day uh, website. And we had that right on our homepage. Um, as a link, and so we could internally have all of the information as well and drive people there um, during the month leading up to Heart Valve Disease Awareness Day. Um, and so that was really nice. Uh, we used, we took advantage of the, um, the PSAs of the different videos that they have out there. We joined in the ch Twitter chat and we were prepared to answer questions from a patient perspective because that's who we are, um, and I think that what was really great about the Twitter chats is that you have people coming from all kinds of different perspectives, and so you get a lot of really great information, um, and it kind of rounds out the chat. And so if you're a patient yourself, um, answer the questions from your perspective. If you're an organization, uh, you, you know, you can do it from that. And our uh, social media plan was very robust. Uh, we used Twitter and Facebook this year, Mended Hearts does have a, an Instagram account, so we will be incorporating the Instagram account as well into our social media plan. And that started about a month prior, and so we're probably going to be gearing up to start it soon. Um, we, we do the, the post um, a couple of times a week at different times a day. We use different infographics and different information that is all thankfully given to us. It's very nice. It's a very easy campaign for us to run because we're able to do it that way and, um, you know, share with our people and encourage them to uh, visit the website and get more information throughout the month leading up to um, Valve Disease Awareness Day. Uh, we also started early communicating. Um, this year, we started December's um, newsletter that went out. We put the information in that we were 
um, going to partner this year again and getting people ramped up for uh, what was coming in February. But this is an example of our January um, 2019 Heart News that we sent the information out. We used all of our channels that were in our disposal. Um, we put out our newsletter, we did social media marketing, uh, in-person uh, flyers for people who were doing in-person events. We also have um, monthly and um, quarterly calls with people in our leadership teams, uh, regional directors and assistant regional directors. And so we always made sure that we update them on calls of what's coming ahead and so they can start planning in their um, individual locations to, even if they're not doing an in live or an in person event, that they can start sharing the information out to their um, to their members during their local uh, support group meetings and their monthly meetings that they have. So last year we did um, we we were sharing patient stories and we hosted educational events. We hosted a <clears throat> excuse me, a community education day at a hospital um, where we had the information that we passed out. We had our valve disease awareness guide, um, our go-to guide that we print. We had information about valve disease and we passed it out to everybody within the community. Um, they were in a lobby of the hospital, so they got a lot of traffic from people who were there for other things. And so that was really nice. And then we also hosted two educational meetings um, with our members and the meetings are open to the public and the hospitals were able to help us to um, advertise that we were having these meetings and that was on valve disease. And so they brought in uh, medical professionals to talk about valve disease. And then we also shared a patient story on our blog. And this year, um, I think that we're going to incorporate a patient story, but I think that the also, we're going to post a blog specifically about valve disease and why it's so important to raise awareness. And um, so we may do two blogs. We might we might put them together. I'm not really sure about that yet. But then, obviously, along the way, every time we were doing something, we shared on social media and we engaged. Um, and and when we did the blog, we we put it on Twitter and Facebook and made sure that we shared everything along the way. And so my tips for success from a partner was that, you know, make sure that you plan early and now is a really great time to start planning. Um, create a calendar so that you aren't um, leaving a lot of days open where there's nothing happening. And then all of a sudden you have two or three things happening back to back in one day. Um, keep the excitement building and make sure that you're communicating often with all of your stakeholders. For us, we have our membership and it's about 40,000 people now. So we um, want to communicate often with them and we want to make sure it stays in the top of their mind throughout heart month, especially since there are a lot of things going on during the month. We want to make sure that um, that constant communication is there. And then utilize the campaign materials that have been given because they are really amazing materials. And like I said earlier, um, it has made it very um, easy for us to, to create a great campaign because we already have all of the tools at our, our fingertips. And so definitely make sure that you take advantage of them. And I really think that's all I have. Thank you so much, Andrea. We are so grateful for your partnership and for um, everything you're doing for heart valve disease patients. And thank you for taking the time um, to share with folks today. Um, and we will obviously keep people posted on, on future plans through outreach um, and the events page. So now it's my pleasure to introduce another one of our partners um, of Valve Disease Day. Laura Ross is a cardiology physician assistant for the Park Nicolet Heart and Vascular Center in Minneapolis. She is also an associate of the American College of Cardiology. Um, both, just wanted to note that both Park Nicolet and ACC are Valve Disease Day members. Um, Laura is also the treasurer for the Association of Physician Assistants in Cardiology, and somehow in her spare time, she is a strong advocate for Valve Disease Day and has planned a number of outreach activities and events, which I will let her tell you about. So, Laura, thank you for joining us to talk about your activities for Valve Disease Day. 
Hello, everybody. What an honor to be offered this opportunity to talk, and um, what a great presentation so far. I'm really impressed with all the work everybody is doing, and I'm happy to share some of the things that we're doing um, from this side. So let me move to the next slide here. Oh, let's go the other way. Sorry about that. So in my role as a representative on the American College of Cardiology Interventional Council, we were charged with starting a structural heart disease or heart valve disease committee to really promote awareness and advocacy. And at the American College of Cardiology, we hadn't had an organized effort toward that goal. Imagine my joy in, in Googling what was out there and finding um, this organization for Valve Disease Awareness Day and was really excited to see an organization whose goals are so concordant um, with those of adv advocacy and awareness. And so some of the things that the American College of Cardiology did um, was really update some of our patient education materials. So this is done through a, um, a venue called CardioSmart. And so our group um, made up of physician assistants, physicians, nurse practitioners, nurses, um, took on the, the topic of updating some of the information. As you all know, treatment has really changed in the last five, 10 years. And so we've updated mitral regurgitation. We came up with what you can see at the TAVR infographic about what this procedure is that's free to print off for, for clinicians and for patients if they're interested in learning more. Um, through the ACC, we also put on a webinar last year that was really well received. It was a patient as well as provider perspective going through the workup for valve disease, um, the inpatient treatment, and then post-hospitalization um, treatment for patients. And so uh, we really think it's important to, of course, involve patients in all of this. Uh, actually, that should of course, be in the center of it all. We plan to have another valve um, webinar to coincide with National Valve, or I should say uh, Valve Disease Awareness Day, and, and I'm happy that um, this organization has stayed true to the times as we are growing, and especially in the American College of Cardiology, much like this organization, we have branched out to having international members. In fact, in the next bullet point, you'll see in social media, Dr. Mervat Alasnag is a fabulous interventional cardiologist from Saudi Arabia, the first female um, in that area of the world, and she will be leading a blog and video campaign to highlight not only interventional uh, valve treatments, but also some of the problems that they have, you know, with uh, other valve diseases we don't even see here in the United States very often. And so it will be exciting to see what her team comes up with um, from across the, the world in highlighting different valve disease issues as well as treatments. Um, American College of Cardiology is also planning on hosting a Twitter chat, um, probably not on that exact Saturday of February 22nd. We are still ironing out the details, maybe that Friday on February 21st, and also we'll be having a social media contest to raise awareness um, and we'll have some Amazon gift card prizes. So please stay tuned and, and be involved in that. They'll be for different likes on um, on the hashtag for Valve Disease Awareness Day, photo contests, those sorts of things. So we're really excited to just bring more awareness with a little incentive there that is always nice. And then just my last slide is talking about raising awareness in our community. So as they discussed, I have been at Park Nicollet um, here just outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and we became a partner in 2019, and in a relatively short turnaround, um, within two days, got my organization to quick do some Facebook posts and really help advertise this important day to raise awareness. Um, plans have also included, the, you know, something simple like heart-shaped chocolates to team members and in the waiting room, um, the focused highlight video on the screens in the hospital and in the clinic to really highlight uh, valve disease awareness and a lunch and learn for providers and patients. These are all goals that we are working toward and really bringing up awareness within our own community. And you'll see on the other side of the slide, uh, I was had the opportunity and honor to be involved in this important paper regarding aortic valve valve stenosis. And so there were several physicians on the interventional council as well as myself who noticed that although the majority of patients um, 
the majority uh, trend is that more and more patients are getting TAVR. That is not true in patients of minority populations. And so really diving into why is that. And minority in this particular paper that was published in November in the Journal of American Culture of Cardiology really outlines patients who are African American. But minority can be anything from socioeconomic status to rural populations and really trying to dive deep and say what can we do to um, help combat this. And, and we came up with several solutions. Increasing advocacy and awareness, of course, is, is paramount, and I really believe that all of you on the call are going to be a big part of the solution. Um, trying to uh, charge pharmaceutical companies and device companies to really increase the enrollment of minority patients in trials and, and really teaching the care team how to be more culturally sensitive and, and to really get more at the why are patients declining this um, it, although we know that the patients of minority populations are doing quite well if they do have uh, procedures such as TAVR, um, they're just not getting to that point as often as some of our patients of minor, or majority populations. So with that, I am just honored to be part of this organization and I'm so happy that we can work together to really address some of our goals of advocacy and awareness and I'm excited to join you all in that. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. We are honored as well to have you as a partner and um, really grateful that you took the time to share all of the wonderful things you're doing. We will, we will stay in touch and watch for everything that um, you're doing for Valve Disease Day. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to quickly um, flag uh, that this year's flagship event for 2020 has been confirmed um, to take place with the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce. Um, it will be a community event with speakers and screening, um, as well as some other activities. Um, it will feature our own Sue Passion, as well as Dr. John White, the Chief Medical Officer for WebMD, who will also the day before be doing our Facebook Live. Um, if you are in the area, please join us. Um, if you're not, feel free to tune in on Facebook Live. Um, you can also stay tuned to Valve Disease Day through our multiple channels um, to get more details on the event, as well as all of the other events that will be coming together. Um, so at this point, we want to open it up to updates and questions. Um, if there are any other partners who want to share your plans for the day, um, you need to raise your hand in the app. So if you go down to the bottom, there's icons, there's round icons. One of them looks like a talking bubble. If you click on that, it will open up um, a screen to the right. Um, and you will have the option to raise your hand there. If you have just a question that you want to ask us, I think the, the best way is to type it into the chat feature um, and submit them and we will field your questions. So let me give you a minute to, I know I took a minute to find my icons, the start of this, so um, give you a second there. All right, we do have one um, question that came in. Um, can you confirm the deadline to request material? February 10th? Um, so yes, February 10th for the glasses. Um, if you want to do any signage, we have some pop-up um, banners and some other podium signs and such. Those take a little bit longer to print and ship. So I'd rather we do that maybe like by the first week in February. Um, honestly, the sooner the better on those, but um, the glasses, we um, have put the deadline at February 10th. Thank you so much for your question. Oh, and we have a question on, um, can you please explain to me how to become a partner? Absolutely, it's easy. Just let us know you want to become one. Um, so you can send an email to Kelsey Martin. Um, her email has been shared through the slides, but it's um, K Alcorn. A-L-L-C-O-R-N at agingresearch.org, um, and we will get you um, officially listed as a partner. At that point, the commitment is really um, to share your logo, to have it posted on the um, site, as well as um, through any outreach where we share partners, and also a commitment to spreading the word however um, you can. I have one more question, then I have a partner update. So the website at the beginning, yes, it's um, the website I gave you at the beginning to note the national health observances is healthfinder.org. And then to go to the national health observances calendar, you just need backslash NHO. Um, you can also just search for um, national health observances calendar, and that should take you there. Um, we also have a quick, um, we want to, Amy from Rock from the Heart wants to give a quick update, so we are going to, Amy, find you and unmute you. Just give us a second. There we go. 
we may be having trouble with how you have connected audio-wise. You may only be able to hear us, Amy. It says you're on the phone. So we're having a little technical trouble. I'm gonna see if we're gonna keep working on that. If anyone else has any other questions or wants to share, um, please chime in. We'll give you one, we'll give one more second on the, the technical side of this. All right, so I've been informed that what we can do is unmute everyone and then we should be able to hear Amy. So everybody, you are warned, you are about to be unmuted. So whatever you may be doing that's noisy, um, we are about to hear it. So we're gonna unmute everybody for a second. Oh. Amy, can, can you, are you there? I just, I just heard a beep, can you hear me now? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, hi, I'm glad to hear some other people on here. I know I've had emails with most of you regarding our Rock from the Heart event, and for the, the Mended Hearts, we actually just connected with Mended Hearts locally here in the Twin Cities chapter about what we're doing. Our, our event is actually before Valve Disease Day. We had our date scheduled before we became a partner, so we're doing events on this February 7th and February 8th. The more exciting thing we just added is on Thursday, February 6th, we are gonna be doing a tour at Abbott Labs in St. Paul, where my husband, who is a survivor from surgery in 2017, is gonna to get to meet the valve team, the people that made his valve. So it will be a tour and get to have his, meet his valve people. On the 7th is a educational symposium and a dinner in downtown Minneapolis at Lowe's Hotel. And on the 8th is a VIP party followed by a concert with two bands, my husband's band and Night Ranger, both have a drummer that had aortic valve replacement. So you can find us on Facebook, Rock From The Heart, or rockfromtheheart.com for all the details on the exciting things we're doing over the two days. Thank you so much, Amy. We're really excited about everything you're doing, and um, we are excited to join you mm -hmm. um, for your events and, and get to witness all of the, the exciting events. I think that is it. Um, last chance, everyone, to either raise your hand to share or to submit a question. Otherwise, I think we are going to wrap up with a few minutes to spare. I wanted to thank you, uh, thank you to everyone, our partners, the advocates, you're all doing such an amazing job um, making a difference in, in valve disease. And so we just wanted to thank you on behalf of the campaign and all of the patients that you're helping. Um, we look forward to seeing you all online and in person over the coming months. And um, please let us know if you have any questions. Have a good one.